Hello and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez. Now, the, uh, the last orogeny, the Nevada orogeny, several things have ha are going to happen in this one here. This one includes, uh, you're going to accrete those Nevada island arcs with the, with the, with the Tethian, um, Tethian affinity. Right? So they have the Tethian affinity. And then you're going to dock this, this ophiolite, this smart bill ophiolite, which is really going to be par also part of this, this coast range ophiolite. We'll talk more about the coast range ophiolite. And then the interesting thing is that these island arcs uh, are going to, once they, once they subduct into that Maloney's fault zone, that, that foothills subduction zone, these, these arcs are going to clog up that subduction zone and cause subduction to really focus back over here, where it's sort of happening under these arcs. So here I say clogging of Maloney's fault zone um, in that foothill subduction. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to end. So let's, let's say that this, this will end. And this is right around 155 million years ago, which is uh, the late Jurassic, late Jurassic when this is happening. And then you're going to, and so that collision is also going to develop a pervasive foliation or cleavage in the rock. It's all trending north, northwest. We call it Nevada and cleavage. And the rock types in the, in the Sierra foothills, the, the, the 49ers, when they came, they saw these rocks standing up in this north, northwest orientation. And they called them tombstone slates because they look like tombstones. And so those are the famous tombstone slates of the Sierra Nevada foothills. They formed during this Nevada orogeny, right? During the Nevada orogeny, late Jurassic up here. And then the other thing that's happening is because we clogged up that Maloney's fault zone, foothill subduction, subduction had to go someplace else. And where it went, it went to, um, it went westward to the current coast ranges. So now we're going to form the coast ranges, or at least the rocks, the older rocks of the coast ranges. Uh, and we begin this Franciscan coast range subduction. So the product of all this is, is quite complicated, but it really is Mesozoic California. We've talked about this when we did metamorphic rocks. So we're going to see over here that we've, we've, we're have we we attaching this foothills terrain, and it's going to be separated from the Son Sonoma Calaveras complex over here by this Maloney's fault zone. So you can still find that. That's where the gold, you know, the the auriferous gravels and the gold-bearing low deposits are found in the Sierra Nevada along this Maloney's fault zone. And all these uh, uh, oceanic crustal blocks, well, that's the, um, uh, that represents that Smartville Ophiolite. Smartville Ophiolite. And you find those in the foothills. And whenever you see Ophiolite, you know there's an ancient subduction zone. They're, they're always related. A part of that smart fill block extends under the Central Valley, uh, its oceanic crust, and it's exposed on the east side of the coast ranges. So when we do the coast ranges, we'll talk about this coast range ophiolite, right? So the coast range ophiolite exposed here. Uh, there's some actually in Alum Rock Park right here in San Jose. And then we got the accretionary wedge subduction zone of the Franciscan Formation. Remember, this is what I call that melange, melange, that accretionary wedge material. So that's our Mesozoic California. Then we're seeing subduction. We're seeing the, the dehydration melting down here at about 100 kilometers depth, uh, where we're seeing magmas rising. You're starting to form the Sierra Baffleth as it intrudes this older rock, and the volcanic arc, Sierra Magmatic Arc, is forming. So there is our Mesozoic California. So now I want to go back and look at the PowerPoint and maybe do a little summary on some of the events leading up to these different uh, uh, accretionary episodes and docking of these different terrains. So again, if we go back to the rifting of Rodinia, what we talked about with the basin and range, we, we end up with a, with a trailing continental stable margin. We're seeing those passive margin sediments forming here. Now, uh, again, remember these passive margin sediments include the noonday dolomite, the Johnny Quartzite, the Ibex formation, Sterling Quartzite. Um, so again, here's the, the passive margin, and we're seeing the rifting of of Australia, Antarctica, and New Zealand going off that way, forming the ancient Pacific Ocean. So note that this activity is occurring by Death Valley, and everything out over here in California hasn't formed yet. It's going to form later on. So again, this is the Neoproterozoic around 650 million years ago. So right around 500 million years to about 400, 300 million years ago, we're seeing uh, uh, the deposition in, in a little bit deeper water of this 
of the shoe fly formation, the harmony fan, shoe fly sediments, terrigenous sediments coming off the land. This um, line here represents the age, the, the edge of the Cratonic North America. So you can see it kind of goes maybe down here to, to Eastern California. So everything to the west of this line is, is ocean. There's, there's no continental material there yet. Now, um, here's a cross section showing, showing the, the Cambrian Ordovician carbonates of the shoe fly complex uh, forming along the edge of, 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 of North America. And then here's that shoe fly complex, the Harmony fan forming down here in, in this basin between this approaching, encroaching island arc, uh, the northern Sierra terrain, and the eastern Klamath Mountains. And then, and then as time goes on, the antler Raj is going to have these um, volcanic units, uh, the Trinity Ophiolite up in the Klamath Mountains, um, uh, these island arc rocks, which are also in the Klamath Mountains, shoe fly formations. Here they have shoe fly one, two, and three, various units in the shoe fly formation. They're all going to be thrust over the top of, 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 um, of, of the edge of North America here during this antler orogeny. And so here's another look at it. So around 300, 360 million years ago is normally what we use. We're going to create the Northern Sierra terrain, the shoe fly complex, and that Eastern Klamath Mountain terrain. So here we're seeing that accretion event. But then again, we got this new margin here, which is going to be that passive trailing continental margin. Also note the reverse polarity over here. And though here's a little um, reconstruction of that. Uh, note that here we have passive North America over here. So here's that, that kind of um, uh, line of the, wet, S, the wedge of, North, of the continent here. And note that here's an ocean trench. The ocean trench here, here they call it the antler arc. But this is the Northern Sierra Trench. Here are the volcanoes, the volcanic island arcs. And eventually this island arc will collide with California to form the antler orogeny. And the rocks in this basin that occur here are that, those shoe fly complex rocks. Now note that we have reverse of arc polarity. So reverse polarity subduction here. So abduction is going toward the west. Now uh, in the northern Sierra Nevada, up near Sierra City, past Downeyville, there is a, 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 a massif of rock. It's all island arc rocks. Pillow lavas, they're andesitic to rhyolites. These, this is the Sierra Buttes, and the Sierra Buttes formation is the primary unit of that island arc material that was accreted during the antler orogeny. Now, um, and then the, then the Sonoma orogeny. So remember, we've accreted the, the, the Northern Sierra Terrain, the shoe fly complex here. We got the passive margin on the edge of it, but then we get this back arc C and we're forming the Calaveras complex in here plus the Sonoma Arcs. And eventually they're going to collide when a thrust over the Calaveras complex, the Sonoma Arcs. And for the first time after this collision, uh, uh, remember we're going to see the, the, the suture here between the, the, the shoe fly and the Calaveras, as that shoe fly Calaveras fault right in here. And then um, when this orogeny happens, for the first time we're going to see subduction under North America, the eastward uh, subduction, beginning of active Cordilleran margin, right? So we're going to see uh, uh, the magmatic arc forming. Uh, and some of the oldest granitic uh, rocks in the Sierra Nevada are about 210 million years old. And so that's the, the, the timing of this eastward subduction, the beginning of it. And then also back here, this is the foothill subduction, which is going to be the Maloney's fault zone. And then here we see uh, the foothill subduction right here. So there is a Maloney's fault zone, foothill subduction. But note that uh, offshore, we're going to have another island arc forming out over here. So this is that that um, Nevada arcs that are forming back over here. And note that here the subduction is toward the toward the um, the east, so toward the east here. So the subduction zone here and the, the, the volcanoes on the overriding plate. Volcanoes on the overriding plate. But again, here is an island arc. Again with McLeod affin affinity here. Um, well actually the, these have the uh, Tethian, but it's called the McLeod arc there. Then we see uh, um, uh, the Sonoma uh, orogeny occurring and these Nevada arcs are getting closer. Uh, then as time goes on we see the foothill subduction going right through here, the Maloney's fault zone. And then here's some of the the cherts and, and, and sedimentary rocks in that of that um, Calaveras complex. This is the Merced River right before you go into Yosemite National Park here. And then 
the Nevada and Raja, about 150 to um, 155 million years ago, where we accrete the Nevada and Arcs, the foothills terrain, the Smartville block, we create the Coast Range Ophiolite and the Smartville terrain over here, um, and we start forming this, this um, uh, uh, Sierra Nevada batholith and the magmatic arc, right? So that is our Mesozoic California. And, you're, and so here's another look at it where we see now there's subduction here in the coast ranges. So we start seeing the Franciscan uh, uh, subduction. And then we'll, we'll see that the foothills subduction has been clogged up and all that's been moved toward the west. And then these are the famous tombstone slates. So those tombstone slates that formed during the Nevada and Orogeny. Remember Nevada and cleavage. Nevada and Orogeny. So anything older than about 150 million years old has this pervasive foliation in the Sierra Nevada foothills. And then um, Mesozoic California, Franciscan subduction information of Sierra Nevada magmatic arc. So here's a foothill subduction here. And then um, the last picture I want to show you is the one for your textbook. This is in chapter 18 showing that same uh, subduction zone. So you can look at this in chapter 18 where we see the, the Coast Range Ophiolite, uh, the Great Valley Sequence, the Franciscan Complex, the, the Baffolith over here, Sierra Nevada, Magmatic Arc, and all the accreted terrains that occur in this foothills belt right here. Okay, well let's stop here. Mm -hmm.